A fight breaks out in class, but this is no ordinary schoolroom scuffle. One student attacks two of his classmates with a knife, severely wounding one and killing the other. Was this young killer an incorrigible thug with zero regard for human life? Quite the opposite. During my years of wrongful imprisonment, I lived alongside people guilty of fraud, robbery and murder. And every one of them felt like they had a good reason. They saw their actions as reactions. And it made me wonder, how do criminals rationalize their crimes? And how does our justice system justify its response? Is it ever appropriate to treat the guilty like the innocent? This is the truth about true crime. September 27th, 2017, the Bronx, New York. It all started when Matthew McCree threw a wad of paper at Abel Cedeno, 15 minutes into their sophomore American history class. Cedeno called him a pussy as he pulled a switchblade from his pocket. McCree rushed Cedeno, throwing the first punches, his friend Arian LeBoy close behind him. What happened next? shocked all of New York City. Prosecutors say 18-year-old Sedeno brutally stabbed two of his classmates, killing 15-year-old Matthew McCree and critically injuring 16-year-old Arian LeBoy. It was such a senseless, shocking escalation of violence and a tragic death for a kid whose teachers and friends described as respectful and wicked smart. What could Cedeno have been thinking? Pulling a knife over a wad of paper? Cedeno's supporters say that wad of paper was the final straw in a long litany of relentless abuse. They pushed Abel too far. Abel was a kid who was made fun of in school, and they pushed him too far. Cedeno already had a difficult home life. His mother had been stranded in Puerto Rico during Hurricane Maria, and his father was battling lung cancer. At school, Cedeno's friends and family say he was bullied for being gay. I want to report the bullying to the school. Yes, Yes. he spoke to two teachers, and they told him to ignore it and be the better person, basically to suck it up. Why are these people always doing this to me? Um, I'm just, I feel... I felt like I was a nobody. Cedeno was clearly struggling. He was self-isolating, skipping class, so much so that he was held back a grade. Eventually, he bought a switchblade as a deterrent. His mother, worried, reported to the school that her son might be carrying a weapon. His bag was searched, but when the blade wasn't found, the school dropped the issue. Then, one day, Cedeno decided to finally stand up for himself. What he hadn't bargained for was that his opponent wouldn't back down. He hit me twice. My fight or fight instinct came up because I knew in my head, you know, it was going to be me and him. No choice but suicide or self-defense. That's how supporters of Abel Cedeno are now justifying his actions. Suicide or homicide? The sad truth is, aside from accidents, these are the leading causes of death in teens, with LGBTQ teens like Cedeno at the highest risk of one, and black male teens like McCree at the highest risk of the other. Cedeno chose self-defense instead of suicide. But what about McCree? At trial, both Cedeno and his lawyer presented McCree as a bully, a thug, and pointed to the fact that his friends showed up in the courtroom flashing gang signs. But was McCree a bully? Not according to his supporters. His mother, Luna, and her attorney say that McCree is a victim twice over. There was no evidence whatsoever that Matthew McCree bullied at any time. I don't know if it's like a racist thing, like everybody black is gang members, 
or if you're black, you don't come from nowhere or you don't have anything, you don't do nothing basically but join gangs. Mm -hmm. And with my son and my family, that's just not the case. Chris Vasquez, a former teacher at UA Wildlife, says McCree was wrongly made out to be a gang member and thug and blamed for his death. There's not one report that could be found in our system talking about Matthew being a bully. And McCree's friend, Arianne LeBoy, testified that he and McCree barely knew Cedeno. So why the deadly altercation? According to Vasquez, two nice kids don't just get up in the middle of history class and attack each other. There was something deeper at play, something vocalized by both sides of the Cedeno mccree divide. The school classroom, the testimony at the trial, it was out of control. The teachers were not controlling the classroom. And there was a failure to enforce the Dignity for All Students Act. Perhaps the defendant was bullied by others in the school. Nothing was done. His mother complained the school did not follow state law. If you're sending your kids to a place, you expect them to be safe and to come home. But the Bronx public school Sedano and McCree attended, UA Wildlife, was not safe. According to a 2017 NYC school survey, only 19% of teachers reported that order was being maintained in the classroom, and 45% of students reported feeling unsafe. But it didn't always used to be that way. Just four years earlier, 86% of teachers said order was maintained, and only 20% of students said they felt unsafe. What happened? In 2014, the Obama administration released a damning report detailing unfair school discipline practices across the country. Black students were being suspended at more than three times the rate of white students. So the Department of Education adopted a new disciplinary policy, which required schools to implement non-punitive interventions and severely limited the use of detention, suspension, and expulsion. Mayor de Blasio pressured the New York school systems to adhere to the new guidelines. Many schools reported positive outcomes from this approach, but at UA Wildlife, it backfired, and teachers watched their classrooms descend into chaos. And with pressure from above to keep the number of reported incidents low, they didn't report acts of bullying and violence. Could that be why McCree had a spotless record? Or why... When Cedeno's mother told the school that he had a knife and his bag was searched, no official report was made. Without the fear of detention and suspension, students fought routinely and even threatened teachers. And when even the teachers are being bullied, how could a bullied kid like Cedeno feel protected? An issue that could have really been addressed and nipped in the bud wasn't addressed. And there's damage to this young man. Do you think the school failed, Abel Cedeno? Absolutely. Abel had to develop a coping mechanism that he called disappearing because the professionals that parents put their trust in to ensure that the, these kids have a safe environment to learn in weren't doing their job. There's no winners in this case. Nobody looks at it that way. Um, so what we're concerned about is making sure that a situation similar to what went on here for years at a time doesn't happen again. Cedeno was ultimately found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 14 years at Rikers Island. UA Wildlife was eventually shuttered as parents unenrolled their children and applications dropped off. And we're left with difficult questions. Were Cedeno, McCree, LeBoy, and all the students at UA Wildlife set up to fail? The Department of Education policy was meant to level the playing field, but it sadly created an environment of chaos where violence and harassment reigned without consequence. Given that we know teenagers are full of hormones and short on coping mechanisms, how much should punishment be a response to their criminal actions? Is it possible to maintain discipline without punishment? And if the outcome of this tragedy is a dead student, prison time for Cedeno, 
and a shuttered school? Has the root of this problem really been addressed? Let me know in the comments and follow or subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of The Truth About True Crime.